my quick one or two minute summary on my market commentary. The market just needs a little bit of time to repair the drop from last Thursday, Friday. While going through my screens and doing my weekend work and going through a lot of stocks, my biggest takeaway or interpretation is that a lot of the stocks just need some time for the volatility to calm down and to provide us with these safer entry points that I like to present to you in this product. Now, uh, the best thing I think to do until that happens is just keep your positions light until we get a little bit more clarity and, and stocks can consolidate a little bit better. One thing I want to stress, though, is don't get too negative on this market. Don't get too bearish. The market is incredibly resilient. I'm still bullish into the election for the reasons I've discussed in the past month or so of videos. And I also outlined them in the article I wrote for Yahoo Finance earlier in August. Also, a lot of the major indexes held their key moving averages uh, showing that the institutions are still supporting this market and the uptrend is intact. And a lot of the leading stocks, which I'm going to get into later in this video, also held their key levels and they continue to act well. They just need a little bit of time. So again, a quick summary, just be patient, let the market give it a little bit of time to provide better entry points, but don't get overly bearish or overly negative because this market's incredibly resilient. It just needs time to provide safer entry points. Now, I'm starting with a daily chart of the NASDAQ composite, and I just want to review what I've talked about for the past couple of months. Since we had the follow-through days in early April, and we identified you know this confirmed market bottom. It was April 2nd on the S&P 500, and this is the NASDAQ composite. It was April sixth on the nasdaq composite for the new members go back to the educational portion of the website if you're not familiar with these terms there's extensive examples and detailed definitions of these terms that you can go back and review so since we've had that confirmed bottom i've been talking about over the past couple of months of this pattern of the nasdaq composite goes up for about eight to twelve days pulls back to its 21 ema the green line here grinds higher for about 8 to 12 days, pulls back. It's not an exact 8 to 12 days. It's just an observation. I've noticed in this example here, it went up for about 6 days and then pulled back. Um, and the reason the 21-day EMA is important is because when we're in strong uptrends, strong indexes and strong stocks tend to hold that level. And then what happened to, as we got into late May, early June is we went a little bit higher uh, a little bit longer than that 8 to 12 days. And we started to grind. It was closer to, I believe, 17 or 18 days or so uh, where we started to grind even higher. And this is where I talk about that concept of a rubber band can get more and more stretched, but eventually it's going to snap back. And unfortunately, we end up having these pullbacks to the 21 day in just one day. We're on June 11th here. We dropped about 5 or 6% in one day. And the reason uh, this is important is because I'm applying to what happened over the last couple of weeks. Let's fast forward to uh, the last couple of weeks. I discussed how the most recent visit to the 21 day roughly was on August 11th. And we were heading into... Uh, a regular cycle options expiration week, which is a third Friday of every month. And I had increased my exposure off of this support level to about 80 to 100% invested for my clients to take advantage of this move. And then I discussed this uh, as we started to go higher that we're starting to get a little bit extended and I'm reducing my exposure uh, because I was looking for some sort of profit taking at the end of the month. This is where I really want to stress the concept that I discuss in the educational videos about defining yourself, whether you're a trader or you're an investor, and also the concept of sacrifice and acceptance. And what I mean by that is if you're a longer term investor, I think most of us are reasonable enough to accept that the market's not going to go up every single day and you have to accept 
As long as you have strong entry points and you're sticking with the longer term trend, you have to accept that we're just going to have these pullbacks, shakeouts along the way. And that's part of being a longer term investor. If you are a trader, which is how I define myself and how I try to reconcile this is do my best to take some profits into strength and, and have some cash for when we get the inevitable pullback. And the sacrifice you make is that sometimes you take profits into strength and things go higher. In this most recent example, I had some members email me and they said, I've been taking profits into strength and they're saying I'm getting frustrated that things are going higher and higher. And my response to that is it was the same with me. And it's kind of like, no shit. I mean, do you expect to get the dead high every time you sell something? That's the sacrifice you make as a trader, that sometimes you just make a trade, take those profits, and things go higher. And in this case, towards the end of August, we just kept grinding higher and higher and higher towards the end of August into early September. And this is where I'm here to remind you about... Uh, that you have to stick to your discipline and remind you that as the rubber band gets more and more stretched, eventually it's going to come down. And I discussed this in the August 26th video, midweek video. I'm going to go to that really quick here. Uh, here's the midweek video from August 26th with uh, the summary I put below the video. I'm just going to remove my picture really quick. And this is just a reminder from August 26th, just a friendly reminder. This is a strong market. You have to stick to your discipline. Strong markets tend to forgive your mistakes, such as chasing stocks and sloppy trading and not stopping yourself out. That's why it's so important to know your rules, know your time frame, stick to your discipline. I was talking about the NASDAQ composite was getting a little extended. I reduced from about 80 to 100% invested down to 50% for my clients because I was looking for some sort of a pullback towards the end of August. I was off by a little bit, no big deal. But the whole point is I've defined myself as a trader and these are the sacrifices you make. Now going back to the NASDAQ composite really quick, this is the problem we have as traders is recency bias. What I mean by that is you start to, and we're all guilty of this, we start to grind higher. And then what happens is, for example, I took some profits into strength, some members told me they did, and then we just forget that the market can ever come down because the recency bias is the Nasdaq's gapping up every day. It's going up 100 points or more every day. The leaders keep grinding higher. We barely get any pullback. And then we start to forget you know, is this market ever coming down? We start to forget the concept that markets do pull back and correct once in a while. And that's why I'm here to remind you of that. You might not get the dead high, which is fine. Um, and you might have to make that sacrifice that things might go higher, but just remember to stick to the discipline because I talked about this I don't really use uh, you know, a percentage above the moving averages, but I talked about this concept of, of daylight, which is what one of my good technician friends calls when you start to see the price getting extended from the moving average and you start to see this space, or he calls it daylight, when you start to uh, move higher and you see this space between the price and the averages. And that daylight here this space was starting to really get extended. And unfortunately, on Thursday, we had a drop similar to June 11th, where uh, I was expecting a pullback to the 21 day. I just didn't expect it in five hours. But that's where you just have to make accept that these are that's part of the market's patterns. And if you're a longer term investor, you have to accept that these pullbacks might happen quickly. And if you're a trader, you have to also accept that uh, things might go higher, but eventually they're going to pull in. Now, how I handled it is I kept about 50% invested for my clients. Did I get hit towards the end of the week? Of course, but if I was fully invested in a lot of the growth stocks that I had that have a higher beta than the markets, I would have got hit more. The reason I lighten up is to uh, so that when we drop, you don't get hit as bad. You have a little bit more clarity. I'm trying to promote calm and disciplined trading. And then also when things come down to the support levels, you can put money to work near those support levels. So again, it's just a reminder 
now that we've had a little bit increased volatility, and I'll get into a minute, uh, a lot of the volume and positive and positives and negatives I saw this week. Just a reminder, though, we just need to be a little bit patient right now and maybe still keep positions light until this volatility calms down. But I wouldn't get overly negative on this market. So let's go into index review and uh, stock review as well.